Well guys, it's been one year and about five days since I started this junk removal business. And I wanted to give you my take on how this year has gone. Some of the things that uh, I would do over and how I would do them if I was starting this business again. And um, I guess just my take on overall, is this a good business to get into? Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, I do junk removal on the side. I have basically a nine to five or an eight to four kind of day job. And I supplement my income with the junk removal business. Um, and uh, it's been really good to me that way. So I don't want to act like I do this full time, um, but I have been doing it part time now for just over a year. I bought my dump trailer last December 8th and I've been doing it ever since. So um, that's kind of my experience doing this business part time. And I didn't start with this truck. I started with the Tundra that you'll see over there. Um, and that worked for me pretty well, except when I did heavy jobs with like dirt and grass and sod and rock. Um, that truck just doesn't uh, have the braking power that this does. It also doesn't have the same power or weight rating, um, but mostly it was the braking that I felt like was lacking on that Tundra, even with good brake pads. So I upgraded this truck um, this August and it has been a wonderful investment for me so far. Um, this has the eight foot long bed, whereas that truck has the six and a half foot um, bed. And so I can hold more in the back, even with tools. I have a lot of space back here. So I'll kind of show you my setup. And then I'll tell you some of the things I would do differently if I was starting again. So, you know, I did the headache rack on this truck um, just to protect it from stuff sliding forward. Toolbox, I keep all my tools in here. Got to have some basic hand tools, uh, fire extinguisher, uh, drill, you know, I keep cr crowbar, axe, um, other stuff like that, you know, for disassembling furniture or just generally disassembling things. Then the other stuff I keep back here is a couple of these small hand carts, which I got at Harbor Freight. Uh, I got this also at Harbor Freight. It's been fine for me. Um, I've got my cones that I put out. And then I, I, I actually got that from a junk job, the larger piano dolly or uh, furniture mover. Um, so coming around to the back, of course, I did get this truck, um, the graphics done. And that turned out really nice. It gives this truck a professional full-time look. Um, whereas my other truck is also my daily driver. That's the Tundra here. And I didn't want to put graphics on that when I was going to my day job. So it's kind of nice to have a dedicated rig. Absolutely not necessary, just something I like. Um, coming around here, you know, I run this business out of my garage. And so I keep all my tools here in the corner. Um, actually, a lot of these tools like that saw I got on the job. Um, something like this shovel, which you can buy at Home Depot is really handy for scooping up items and throwing them in the, the trailer. Um, and then a lot of my other tools, sometimes I'll take my blower with me. It's nothing fancy, but uh, over here, it's kind of a mess, but I'll kind of go through my, my quote shop space, show you what I got going on. So these are all from a junk job. I got a bunch of free um, extension cords, a lot of this stuff you'll notice over here, um, like all these dominoes I'm going to give my son to play with. That was from a moving job I'm currently doing. Um, yeah, a lot of these containers, I even got this whole thing of trash bags for free from a garage clean out. So these buckets came from that clean out, same with these, and I just kind of keep stuff in it. Um, Got my shop back under here. I got this desk that came with this um, vice at a junk job. So a lot of the, you know, I, I get a lot of stuff that people throw out this thing um, and this ammo can, you know, now maybe I have a problem. I, I really shouldn't be keeping everything I get, but if I get good stuff, I save it. But problem is now, as you can see, my quote shop space here is filling up, which is just my two car garage um, here at my house. So 
I do keep my dump trailer over here. This is a 12 by 16, no, 6 by 12 load trail. Didn't have the wood sides. I built those up and then moved the tarper up on it. So it was just two foot sides. I built those up. The only other modifications that I did to this trailer, um, because it was kind of an equipment trailer, it does have the spreader gate. Came like that, which I haven't ever used. But um, I did add, or I did have a welder do a couple things. So in the corners here, I used to have D-rings that would tie down equipment in each of the four corners. Uh, but it was always having junk snag on it when I was at the landfill. So we cut those out, my welder did, and then he welded on these pockets here. And that was a, um, what allowed me to run these stake pockets up or these wood two by four pressure treated up and I added the back doors. Um, so as you can see, I just it had the pockets that were integrated into the sides. So I built those up and then built up the sides. This, this last board was kind of an afterthought. And so that's why I added, you know, the, the boards. But um, honestly, the wood boards have been pretty good. Um, I just have bolts with nuts on the outside that go through it. I don't really get hung up anymore now that these are taken out. Uh, but if you do get a dump trailer for junk removal, you may, may not want to have D-rings down here. If they were up here, um, furniture still might snag, but not as much as if they're on the floor. So I did build up the sides myself. I could have gotten a bigger one with the sides already built, but that was like an extra $1,500. And I think I only spent 700 bucks building the sides up myself with the wood. Um, I am going to be filling in these gaps. This is kind of a temporary thing. And I did just actually get some nice wood siding from a job for free. So I'm going to be building, probably taking these off and building up the back doors and then putting some graphics on those. When we did the welding, unfortunately the heat marks came through and so it kind of destroyed some of my stickers and stuff, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, like I said, this trailer, well, it gets some use. So these signs I got from Got Print, um, and then they're actually just banners. And I just kind of use some washers and screws to hold them in. That's what's nice about the wood sides versus metal is that it's kind of easy to just like screw stuff onto it. You want to put um, hooks for, you know, maybe a shovel or a broom. You could do that. But I just had these made on Got Print. The QR code scans directly to my website and everything. Um, came with a spare tire. Guys, I, I have not had to use, um, these are 10 plies. I have not even had a single flat. I've had one nail and it came out. It was shallow enough within the tread and it came out. Um, but I'm really surprised I haven't had any flats. When I do eventually get some flat tires, I'll probably be putting heavier duty 12 plies on. I've heard those are a lot better. The only thing that really has broken so far on this trailer, and I apologize, it is dirty, is the latch, just the, the uh, bolts. You can actually see them down there that hold this up. Um, it it kind of rattles loose, so I need to like maybe lock tight that on somehow. Um, but I haven't had any issues with the battery. It does have a charging indicator here. And then it has a charging port on the outside that I just run an extension cord from that wall and plug it in right here in my garage. So that's pretty handy. You can lock this so that somebody doesn't steal your battery. Now, the one thing I would change if I was doing this again is I'd probably get a power jack because this is a lot of cranking. Like, I don't know if you can see it. It's going really slow but it's just a lot of cranking to get on and off that ball every single time. This is a two and five sixteenths um, ball and it's been fine for me. I haven't had any issues with the ball, but uh, it would be nice to have a, an electric jack or maybe one of these on a spring load. It does have three different positions and there's one more, more hole up in there. So you can kind of drop it down, but then you do end up having to crank it quite a bit. Um, overall build quality, I'm pretty happy with this trailer. It's a 10K rated trailer because I bought it originally thinking I would do this business with the Tundra. And um, like I said, served its purpose in the beginning, but ended up getting the F-350. 
um, just to be that much safer and have that much more capability. Um, and the nice thing is having the write off in this business, um, it can kind of help offset some of my day job income with this F-350 as a business expense for the hauling business. Um, all right, so let's actually talk about the business itself and kind of go through what my main jobs are. So if you guys watch my channel very much, you know that I'm here north of Sacramento. And as you can see, I live in a suburb, Rockland. This is pretty, pretty typical of uh, Roseville, Rockland. Like a lot of the new build stuff is just all these subdivisions, right? So what's great about it is that people don't have big lots. And so like this guy has RV parking, but most people in my neighborhood are bigger than the newer ones, but most people don't have a lot of space. And so they end up filling the garage up pretty quick. And a lot of people don't have trucks, so they end up accumulating junk and need somewhere to take it. Well, that's where junk removal comes in, right? A lot of people don't wanna spend the time or don't know how to go to the dump or where it is. They don't wanna go mess with it. So the I'd say about 80% of my business is residential junk removal. And that includes old furniture that's like old kids toys that have been out on the side yard collecting you know rainwater for several years um it's just a variety of stuff i've done some storage cleanouts i've done cleanouts after people move and they have a bunch of stuff they don't want so the i'd say about 80 percent of my business has been that um i'd say about 10 percent of my business has come from actually renting this dump trailer out and leaving it on site as a dumpster rental. What's cool about dump trailers for that is that because it's not a roll off, it's actually a mobile wheeled unit. You're not violating any of the contracts that some of the larger companies like Recology, Waste Management, um, Athens Services, um, some of the Republics, right? Those guys have contracts with cities and counties saying, they're the only ones that can have quote unquote roll off those big metal bins in certain locations, certain cities. And so if you leave one, it's actually against the city's policy to allow you to have that. But you can leave a dump trailer in place on site as a mobile dumpster and market it that way without violating any of those city or county franchise agreements. Um, of course, the downside to doing that is that somebody can steal it, which is why I ended up getting this, which is a Fort Knox lock with a puck lock. And it's quite difficult to break into this. It's very, very thick welded steel and powder coated. Um, and so this goes over the hitch. And then I also have a GPS tracker on this trailer that I can see in real time, any time of the day where it's at, I can set a geo fence so that if I drop it at a customer's house, I'm alerted as soon as it leaves that location. Um, so that's pretty slick. Like I said, I've only done about 10% of this business so far. Um, revenue wise is junk removal or I'm sorry, a dumpster rental in the beginning. I thought I would do that a lot more. It just turns out that my customer base, um, is, isn't that, and I haven't done a ton of marketing to try to get that up because it's honestly just been faster and you make more money doing junk removal where you haul this stuff away yourself versus leaving it on somebody's driveway for a weekend, they fill it up. Um, there's pros and cons. I still will do it. I don't mind it. I haven't had a bad experience, but I don't let anybody drive my trailer because my insurance doesn't work that way. And I don't want somebody beating it up or getting in an accident. And then they sue me because their truck wasn't rated for my trailer or they're a bad driver or whatever. I just don't want that liability of somebody getting hurt or my, my property getting damaged. So when I do dumpster rental, I, I drop it off, lock it up. It stays there until I come back and pick it up. And then I charge them a certain amount based on like they get an allotment of one ton. And then if they're over one ton, I'll charge them the fees on the back end to recover any overage fees. And here at my dump, it's about $66 per ton for green waste and $103 per ton for general junk or trash. And that's any household stuff that includes, um, demolition debris as well, like shingles, tile, concrete, that kind of stuff. So um, generally speaking now, I've gotten very good at estimating what a trailer weighs or what like looking at a pile of junk will weigh.
But in the beginning, I mean, it's just a learning curve. Like I quoted stuff and lost money on a couple of jobs because I didn't know how heavy it was going to be. And it was just uh, a learning experience. So there's really no shortcut for experience. You know, if you can go work for a junk removal company first, great, but I don't think it's necessary. I didn't have any formal junk removal experience. I just jumped into it, bought the equipment and started, you know, I got the insurance, business license, all that stuff and started doing this. Um, as far as um, what the other 10% of the income is, so 80% junk removal, 10% dumpster rental. The other 10% has been helping people move stuff around, whether that's like a couple of big desks from this business to my home or we're moving our business, or I've helped many of my actual direct neighbors here move and I'm still in the process of doing that with one guy who's selling his house. So doing local moves and stuff like that, um, between the truck and the trailer, I can carry quite a bit in here and um, offering to help with the labor um, is something that I do. And I just caveat, I have everybody sign something saying, I'm not insuring any of your goods from being damaged. So if you're not happy th with the way that it um, is wrapped or, you know, like I'm not wrapping it professionally with moving blankets, generally speaking, I'm just helping you load it into the jump trailer and move it, right? Like washers, dryers, garage stuff, you know, large items. If they want professional movers, that's going to cost them more money, and that's not me. And I just make it very clear that that's not how my insurance works, and I'm not covered, you know, to move their equipment, like move their home goods. If something gets damaged, that's on them. And so everybody's fine with that. Like most people have a bunch of IKEA stuff, and they don't care, you know. But if somebody has super nice stuff, I'm going to be very clear with them and say, hey, like this is not insured in my trailer because I'm technically not a moving company. Um, maybe I'm opening myself up to some risk there. Let me know if that's the case and you're aware of that, but that's just how I do it. So that's about all of my business. Um, this year we did, uh, I guess I'll go into the numbers. I did over $12,000, just over like 12,400 in revenue, which wasn't a lot. Um, and then I had about a 50% profit margin on that. And that's for like just operationally speaking. So that doesn't count what I've spent on my truck and trailer. We're paying those off over time and depreciating them accordingly. I have an accountant who does all that, but um, you know, generally speaking, after dump fees and fuel, those are your two biggest variable expenses in this business. That eats up about 50% of, of what I've done. Now, marketing is a little bit, I don't spend a ton of money on marketing, but um, I use Google My Business and my reviews to get me calls. Um, I have been experimenting lately with Google pay per click a little bit, but in my opinion, I'm not at a place where that has been cost effective yet. Now I'm sure as I spend some more money and time learning this, um, I'll get better analytics on what keywords I shouldn't spend money on and what keywords I should spend money on. But to give you a flavor so far, the average cost per click is about 429 for the keywords in my local area. That's furniture removal, junk removal, junk removal near me, you know, those kinds of things. But um, I am by no means an expert. I, I'd say that each job I've gotten might cost me 40 or $50 in clicks. And so I need to recover that and then obviously have my profit margin built in to make that worth it. So obviously it's much better if you can get your organic, um, you know, traffic to your website from your Google My Business, your Facebook page, your next door posts, um, Craigslist, right? Like word of mouth, like people seeing your truck out. Those are gonna be the most cost effective ways, in my opinion, to get business. Networking with real estate agents is big too. I have, um, I used to sell real estate, so I have some friends still in the business and I've been getting quite a bit of business from them when they have houses they're getting ready to list and, and they refer me to their clients. So, um, yeah, that's really a flavor of the business so far in my first year. It's it's going great. I love it. It's a lot of fun. I've gotten a lot of nice finds. Um, but, uh, you know, I plan on doing this for many, many years to come. And that is why I invested in the equipment I did. You could definitely do it without a dump trailer. It's just going to be slower to unload. It's going to be a lot cheaper, lighter. You can tow it with a smaller truck. Um, but in my opinion... Um, the dump trailer definitely saves you time and it allows you to do certain jobs that you wouldn't want to hand unload like tile, demo, dirt, rock. So you're just going to have to kind of turn that stuff away if you're not equipped for that. For general junk removal and furniture, 
a landscape trailer with a ramp would be even easier because it's going to give you a lower load height and a ramp to get stuff in whereas my load height is where this you know frame rail sits so you're talking about 30 inches up now it's still a little lower than a tailgate on a big truck um but you know it is high so you do have to kind of heave stuff up there if i was starting this and i just wanted to do junk removal i might start it with a two axle landscape trailer um, but I might buy the dump trailer again, too. It's It's been good to me. It's just a bigger investment for sure. So um, if you guys have any questions about uh, anything I've covered, I, I'm really an open book. I try to share as much information that would be helpful to somebody else in this business uh, because I, I truly do believe the market's not saturated. There's a lot of people doing this, but there's a lot of work out there in any market. And so generally it's commensurate to the number of people needing the service and the number of people providing it. There's a lot of pie to eat, guys. We just all have to get fed. So I wish you success if you're going into this business. And uh, please do comment, reach out with any questions. Let me know how I can help you. And again, thanks for watching the video and the channel. I really do appreciate the support. We're over 750 subscribers, and I started this channel in March. I'm trying to reach 1,000 in the next three months. So I'd appreciate if you share this video with somebody else um, who you think would enjoy watching. Thanks again, guys, and have a happy 2024.